Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Easter Special. Now picture this. There's a seven-year-old boy who wakes up on Easter morning. Let's call him John. He wakes up and sees the Easter Bunny. Uh, the Easter Bunny is laying out baskets for him and his little brother and sister. The Easter Bunny finishes up and then runs off to get to the next house. Now John notices something weird. The Easter Bunny forgot his little sister's basket. So naturally, John races off on his bike to catch up to the Easter Bunny and tell him. So, the Easter Bunny has a head start. The Easter Bunny is 100 meters ahead when John gets on his bike to catch up. Now, John's a lot faster, so he catches up those 100 meters. But in that time, the Easter Bunny has already traveled another 50 meters ahead. And so John catches up those 50 meters, but then the Easter Bunny is 25 meters ahead. And this is going to continue infinitely. The Easter Bunny is always going to be a little bit further ahead of John if John catches up to the Easter Bunny to where the Easter Bunny just was. This will continue even if John only has to catch up one centimeter, the Easter Bunny is going to travel 0.5 centimeters in the time that it took John to catch up. So does this mean that John will never catch up to the Easter Bunny? We live in the real world, so we know that if there are two racers, uh, the faster racer is going to overtake the slower racer. But this problem is known as one of, it's, this is um, the most famous of Zeno's paradoxes. These are a collection of paradoxes uh, by a Greek philosopher in the 5th century BC. And they have perplexed mathematicians uh, and some scientists for centuries. But we can explain this by using another one of Zeno's paradoxes and pointing out where its flaws are. So, let's say that John has caught up to the Easter Bunny and they've returned to John's house and the Easter Bunny is going to place John's sister's basket in this chair, which is located two meters away from where the Easter Bunny is standing. Our scale's a little off, but that's okay. So the Easter Bunny we can think of this in halves. The Easter Bunny is going to travel one meter of the two meters. And then the Easter Bunny is going to travel half that distance again, one half meter. And then he'll travel one half again, so another quarter meter, and then an eighth of a meter, and we'll do one more, one sixteenth of a meter. If he's traveling an infinite amount of halves, Will he ever reach the chair? So let's explain this using a couple of equations. So our bunny is traveling one meter plus one half meter plus one quarter meter plus one eighth meter plus one sixteenth. And it got a little squished, but there's a uh, ellipsis on the end there to show that the equation goes on and on forever. And so let's divide this equation in half. So one half of our b, and we're going to divide each of the terms separately. So one divided by two is one half, plus one half divided by two is one quarter, plus one quarter divided by two is one eighth, plus one eighth divided by two is one sixteenth, and each of the subsequent terms are going to be divided by two. And now we're going to subtract this entire equation from our original. So b minus one half b, that's one half b. And let's look at what we have here. One half minus one half is going to cancel out. It's going to be equal to zero. And one quarter minus one quarter cancels out again. And each of these terms are going to cancel out except for the one. So we see that one half b is equal to one. And if we multiply this by two, the distance that the Easter Bunny travels is two meters. And so we see that the Easter Bunny, even though Zeno's paradox seems a little bit weird, the Easter Bunny will travel those two meters. Now the reason this works is because there are a couple of different kinds of infinity. And what I'm talking about in particular here um, is infinite series. So there are two different kinds of infinite series. There are diverging infinite series where, for example, you'd have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 
plus all the way to 100 plus 101 and on and on forever. And so this kind of infinite series is called diverging because when each of these terms is added up, it will go up infinitely. It'll go on to infinity. The infinite series that we used here is a converging infinite series because we know that it adds up to a finite amount in this case too. So let's look it up using let's look at it using sigma notation. So we're going to have an infinite number of terms and we're going to start where our first term n is equal to 0. That'll make more sense in a second. So this equation written in sigma notation is one half quantity to the power of n. So what this means is that our first term is when n equals 0. So anything raised to the power of 0 is just 1. Plus, and our second term is where n is equal to 1. So 1 half to the power of 1 is 1 half. 1 half to the power of 2, our next term in the series, is going to be 1 quarter. And this is going to continue on and on infinitely. And in order to prove that this is the same equation and it's equal to 2, we can use the formula to sum up an infinite series. So our sum is going to be, be equal to a, let me divide this out here so that we've got a clear space. So our, our sum is going to be equal to a over 1 minus r, where a is equal to the first term in our series, in this case it's 1, over 1 minus r, which is equal to our common ratio. In this case, it's 1 half. So if you simplify this equation, you get 2. And so uh, we know that this paradox here, and our first paradox as well, they both work. Um, they're, they're not infinite. The bunny will reach uh, the bunny will reach the chair in this case, and John will catch up to the Easter bunny because these are both converging infinite series. And so let me point out one more interesting thing about Zeno's paradox. Uh, if you've noticed, I haven't mentioned any time frame for either of these two paradoxes. That's because Zeno's paradox relies on length alone. And if we start working with a quantifiable amount of time, uh, Zeno's paradox falls apart. So here, if each step took one second, if the Easter Bunny traveled one meter in one second, and then one half meter in one second, and then one quarter meter in one second, then the Easter Bunny is traveling an infinite amount of halves in an infinite amount of time, and he will never reach the chair. But if we say that the Easter Bunny reached the chair two meters away in two seconds, then it's safe to say that the Easter Bunny was traveling at one meter per second. And the same thing works for the first paradox. So if the first part of the equation where um, John had to travel 100 meters to catch up to the Easter Bunny originally, if that took one second and then the next bit that John had to travel took one second, then John is decreasing infinite amounts in an infinite amount of time and will, ne will never catch up. But if we say that John is traveling, so John is traveling at 10 meters per second, we use t for time. And our bunny is traveling at 5 meters per second, but the bunny had the head start, remember, so he's already traveled 100 meters. Then we can set these equations equal to each other, 10t equals 5t plus 100, and solve for t, and that time will be 20 seconds, and that is when John will catch up to the Easter Bunny in the original paradox. Thank you for watching the Easter special on Zeno's Paradox. So, click on the blue egg to subscribe to our channel for more math videos. Click on the yellow egg to visit our holiday playlist for more specials.
and click on the green egg to visit centerofmath.org for even more math resources.